I was 2,500 miles from home in a hotel lobby, small hotel, having breakfast one morning. And I noticed these two guys at another table were staring at me. I wonder what, I don't know anybody here. Why do these guys keep staring at me? I went over and they said, are you Ashley McGlone? Turns out they were peers in this large company that I worked for and I had never met them, but they know who I was. Um, in the tech panel interview for the current job that I have, one of the three interviewers had been following me online for three or four years already as I was in this interview with them. And it made the interview more of just a conversation. And then in my current role, when I went through new hire training and there were other new hires there with me, one turned around on day one and said, are you Ashley McGlone? And then they called their buddy and they said, you'll never guess who's in new hire training with me. And then right after I started my new role, I was at a conference speaking as usual, and I was working the vendor booth and some peers, some new sales peers were in the booth with me. And this guy walks up and says, hey, you're Ashley Malone, go TPFE. Hey, can I get a selfie with you? Did the selfie. And then uh, we chatted and walked off and, and these new peers said, what just happened? These are fun stories to tell. And I don't really like talking about myself, but and we're talking today about how to automate your career with a personal brand. My name is Ashley, and it's nice to meet you. And I'm glad we're here together. I really wish we could be uh, in person in Nashville eating hot chicken together, but I'm glad we've got this time together at the Automation Summit today. And I've spoken at dozens of technical conferences over the years, but I've never really gotten a chance to speak on this topic. I want to give you a different skill set today in our session that you can use for the rest of your life, regardless of the technology that you choose. And lots of people have written about personal success and personal branding careers, things like that. And today I'm going to share you what worked for me. And while much of this is in the context of the people that I worked with or the companies that I worked with or those technologies that I used, now what I'm going to give you today is a template that you can use for your own purposes. I'm going to show you how you can automate your career with a personal brand. Now, Think about those stories I just told in the opening, but let's rewind the clock. How did those people know who I was? Uh, January 4th of the year 2010, I flew to Seattle, Washington for three weeks to start new employee orientation at Microsoft, the biggest company in the world, for the biggest software company in the world anyway, with 100,000 of my new peers. And I work for Microsoft. Somebody pinch me. I would just wake up with this stupid grin on my face every morning. And my wife kind of finally learned that, oh, he's thinking he's daydreaming about working for Microsoft again. But she was happy for me because I was happy in my role and where I was. But then I suddenly, um, I wouldn't say I panicked necessarily, but I had this thought like, wait a minute. Um, there's a high bar to get this role inside of Microsoft. And now I'm in the most popular specialty in this role that I have. How am I going to differentiate myself when performance review comes and they're ranking me against peers? How am I going to, um, you know, do okay in my reviews here? But little did I know uh, within a few years that customers all over the world would know who I was and that I would be able to have an impact beyond my own team. So think about this for a second. Why are we here uh, in this virtual room together? Why did we, and, and not in a metaphysical sense, why are we here, but why are we in this virtual conference room together today? We're here because we all want to learn something. And that's what we have in common. We are here because we want to learn. And who are we going to learn from? We're going to learn from others who have been there and done that. And Zig Ziglar is famous for saying years ago, if you help enough other people get what they want, then you'll get what you want. And that advice is timeless. And you can build your own brand by being the person that helps other people. And right away, you might protest, but wait, I don't know that much. I don't have that much to share. What can people learn from me? But I'll, I'll tell you this, I started in technology 40 years ago, and I could use your help learning Discord. I've never used it. And I know I'd be all thumbs. There's something you can teach me. I'm sure you can. So to build your personal brand, you can simply start by being somebody who helps other people. So when your content comes up in an online search once somebody finds it, but then they find it twice, they find it three times, all of a sudden they begin to recognize who you are, that you have answers for them, you have earned a follower. 
So think about the situation. If you read the little blurb for this session today, you're thinking about maybe an interview situation and how could you differentiate yourself from there? What if a prospective employer were to go search your name online? What would they find? Well, if they search my name online, there are five other people in my area named Ashley McGlone. It seems like a rare name and they're all girls. All right. <laughs> but if they search for Ashley McGlone online, uh, they're going to find some things. And, and that's really helped me in my career. And that's what I want to help you do for your career to automate your career. So what will they find online? Will it open doors for you? Uh, will it make the interview an afterthought? And will your reputation precede you? Or will you spend that interview time trying to build your credibility from scratch? So why do you want to build a personal brand? Uh, it will automate your career for sure. There's lots of reasons people will build a personal brand. They want to maybe land the dream job or get a promotion that they've always wanted. Or maybe it's just a deep sense of career satisfaction, knowing that you really help somebody. Uh, you can use it to leave a legacy. Or maybe you want to use it as an excuse to grow your own skill set and challenge yourself. And that's particularly popular as well. But if you're looking, looking to be a celebrity, um, that might not be the best motivation for building a personal brand. There's maybe 500 people that know who I am online. But I mean, I go to a family reunion and I talk about Active Directory and PowerShell. Nobody has a clue what that means, right? But there's a few people that when we get together, they know who I am. But really, this is not a celebrity thing. It's not really about that. It's about really... Maybe you want to travel and meet other people. Maybe you want uh, to open your employment options or uh, just demonstrate your, and establish your credibility on a line in a way that's uh, referenceable. Okay, so there's lots of reasons you might want to do this, but it really, in this case today, what we're talking about will help you automate your career. Now, I'm going to talk about some different techniques, how to do that. But this one thing I want you to take away today, and this is the bluff, the bottom line up front. So how do I build a personal brand? So number one, I'm going to help some people. Number two, I'm going to record it. I'm going to write it down, make a video, something like that. And then I'm going to put it somewhere other people can find it. And then I'm going to repeat that process. That's it. It's that simple. You can build your personal brand by helping other people, documenting it. Of course, you're going to document in an anonymous way that doesn't reveal anything about the people that you helped, right? And you're going to use lab scenarios, not real customer information or, you know, people that you help. You're not going to use their information, but you're going to anonymize that in a way that protects them. And then you're going to put it somewhere people can find it. And you're going to just repeat that process. And you can do this with any number of uh, online uh, things. Now, when I started in my role at Microsoft, I was a premier field engineer and I was doing Active Directory work. And we would have this assessment that we would deliver to customers about their environment. And then at the end of that assessment, we would give them some findings and say, here's what's wrong with your environment. Maybe we could help you fix it. Uh, maybe not. Uh, good luck. Hope that uh, we'll check again next year. And hopefully you've fixed some things by then. And I thought that can't be our story. You know, here's the findings. Good luck. And so I started writing some scripted solutions to help address some of these situations. I put them on a blog and then I just repeated that process. And before too long, um, I had followers who were actually finding that content and it was being very helpful for them. And before I know it, I had a growing personal brand online of helping people with real world solutions. <laughs> so when it comes to creating a personal brand, there are a couple of different techniques that you can use. The one that's really, I found helpful was finding a niche or a niche, however you want to say that, a niche, right? So a niche is an intersection of two interests or specialties. So plenty of people know about A and plenty of people know about B, but very, very few people know how to apply those to A and B in a, in a niche. And that intersection is really where you can build your specialty. Uh, Seth Godin's famous for saying that uh, in one of his books, he said, Any, anybody can be the best in the world at anything if your niche is small enough. You know, if you want to be uh, painting koala bear toenails and, and that's your specialty, there's not, not much demand for that. You want to pick something that's, that's more you know, impactful. For me, that specialty was Active Directory and PowerShell. So a lot of people knew Active Directory, a lot of people knew PowerShell, but very few people really specialized at that intersection. And that's what I made uh, a big part of my brand. I moved on later after that kind of wore out and, and to keep things fresh. And I picked other things, but that's really where I, I started. So think about your own skill set. Ask people around you. You know, Take your own inventory first. What are the things I'm good at, passionate about? 
And then ask your peers, ask your manager and your next one on one say, you know, where do you see my strengths? Because sometimes they'll see things that we don't see ourselves because we just know ourselves, and we don't think about things the way other people do when they look at us. So help find a list and, and put, put together a list of the things that I'm good at and that I'm passionate about. And then find some uh, interesting intersections there where maybe there's a potential opportunity that you can provide some some insight that others may not. Um, have quite yet that you're uniquely skilled to do. Another way you can build a personal brand is picking the dirty jobs. You know, Mike Rowe made a whole brand about dirty jobs, right? But you can do that in IT as well and technology. Um, you can look at scarce skills or scary skills, right? You know, I don't know anybody that enjoys certificates very much, but if you go look up the PKI guy online, he's built a whole business around that. I ran into him speaking at a conference in Florida one time, a former uh, colleague, and he went off and started his own business doing something that's really hard that other people don't like to really get their hands dirty with that. But he went in and waited in and made a real career, a profitable career out of it. Right. I mean, think about maybe it's a particular uh, language that you enjoy writing in or uh, a DevOps technique that you've mastered that you can help others with. But then you intersect that again with maybe another part of an industry. Uh, maybe you look at, you know, refactoring code, you know, code from language X to language Y and you built that as a specialty. Right. And there's a demand for that, you know, migrations, integrations, you know, different things that, you know, maybe it's database tuning, but it's not just database tuning. It's this particular new flavor of database. And you can write that technology wave of that new uh, technology that people are currently searching for, right? There's a guy on Twitter called Quinny Pig, funny title uh, for a handle, but he specializes in AWS, which, okay, lots of people do that. But then he also has this billing thing. He helps people decipher what's running up my bill every month. And I don't understand all this. It's, it's included in these line items. And he puts two together and he's, he's made a great niche for himself. And he's also picked something that's kind of hard uh, with, you know, nobody likes to talk about billing. So lots of different ways that you can find a specialty to, to make your brand about. So then you find an area of interest and you think, well, okay, well, what am I going to write about? Or what am I going to make videos about? What am I going to blog or live stream about? What's, what's going to be my thing? So again, those niches are a good place to start. Uh, problem solving. I, I did this with uh, my Active Directory and PowerShell skills. I would do group policy reports in ways that native tooling couldn't do. And it became very popular because I was a user of these things and I needed some tooling. So I made some tooling around it. And sure enough, I knew how to write some code and I could solve some problems. And it became really popular because it turns out other people had the same problem. Um, I also did, you know, AD, Active Directory snapshots and attribute level recovery. I did you know, troubleshooting slow PowerShell code, just different uh, problem solving type things, real world scenarios. And, and I particularly did blogging and I would have long format blog posts where you know, most marketing people tell you to keep your blog post to, you know, a couple hundred words. And mine were pages long with details and screenshots and code samples and very detailed real world things that I had really proven out in my lab and working with customers, helping them uh, find the answers they needed. And then uh, these really became like frequently asked questions as well. I would post them to my blog or you could do it to a YouTube channel, pick wherever you want to publish these things. And all of a sudden, um, you know, if, if I'm talking to people and I hear the same question come up a couple of times, hey, I can just write it down and then I can just multiply my time and impact. Say, hey, just go read this blog post. I put, all, put it all there. And, you know, the other thing that helps, I always talk about how in, uh, in the third Indiana Jones movie with Sean Connery. Uh, Indiana Jones is talking to his dad and, and, and they've got this little, he has dad had this little journal where he wrote down all the art, you know, these uh, archeological findings and the signs and the engraves, what, you know, the scripts, whatever he found. And, and they lost this. And uh, Indiana Jones, his dad said, uh, well, Indiana Jones says, Hey, don't you remember they need this information? He said, no, I wrote it down for a reason. Right. So I, I know I, I suffer from a condition called IFS. I forget stuff. And I have to write that down for my own sake, because sometimes people ask me about something I did five years ago. And I said, well, I need to go read my own blog post, too, because I put it all down there. Right. So you can research it in the field, in your lab and and be thorough about it. And that really has value, especially in a technical field. So some practical bits to consider. Uh, we're going to talk about some of these things and they, may, they might sound random, but when it comes to building your brand, different things to consider that I've found to run into that they may not be top of mind when you're just thinking about it first off. So um, am I going to do this on my personal time or am I going to do this on my work time? 
as part of my job and my role. I've kind of been a maverick in my roles and adapted them to include some of these types of things to, to build uh, the business that I worked for, but also to build my own personal brand as well as the corporate brand and things like that. But maybe uh, that's you don't have that support. Maybe you want to do it in your personal time and use it as a ticket out of your current job. Maybe you're not happy where you are. You want to uh, build a, a bridge to get to another role. It's a great way to do that. Um, another thing to consider uh, with, if you're going to do this in the context of your employment, make sure you read your company's social media policy. Usually they have some common characteristics. Make sure that you clearly state who you work for as your employer and that you're not making any kind of product statements on behalf of the company. And that you're uh, obviously being forthright and you're not trying to hide your like you know, slide in little things to advocate for the company without letting people know that you work for that company. Right. And because then that could look um, suspicious online. So you just make your presence known. And then uh, we used to say, if if what I write on social media or put in my blog or my YouTube channel, if that would show up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal tomorrow, uh, would I be in trouble? Would our company be in trouble? And usually that's a pretty good guideline to make sure that you're following some good practices. Also, one that's really easy for people to get in trouble with is legal use of graphics, media, music, things like that. If you're creating content online, make sure that you have a legal right to use that content. Do not just go to your search engine, do an image search and say, hey, this looks cool. I'm going to throw this in my blog post or my video uh, because you probably don't have legal permissions to use that. So make sure that you properly source those and give attribution where necessary. Uh, to, so that's uh, on the up and up because there are some sad stories of people who were sued and had thousands of dollars of legal fees because they chose to use a meme or an image that they didn't own. So be careful about that. Uh, do I want to monetize this? If I'm doing this personally on my own time, do I want to take out ads? Do I want to um, have a downloadable ebook that's uh, helpful for folks? I want to monetize this in some way, create subscription services. There are lots of ways to, to do that these days. Um, and some people have completely left their paid job, so to speak, and built their own business entirely off of uh, online content. They've done quite well at that. There's several people here at this company or at this conference and some of our presenters even who have done that. So you might want to talk to them. Need to know how to choose the right social media handle. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. I'm also going to talk about what's, what's known as the hype cycle. So uh, let's drill in a little bit more on personal time versus employer time if you're building your brand. I have done all of mine under my uh, corporate identity. I've built a brand when I was at Microsoft, now at Tanium. I'm building out an evangelism strategy here, doing some web shows, things like that. So I've done all of mine on company time, um, and that may or may not work for you. It's a conversation with your manager, obviously. But I want to call out some things here, some pros and cons of if it's on your personal time or your work time. So if you're going to build your brand on your personal time, um, sometimes that can be harder to build momentum. Uh, I had the benefit when I was blogging at Microsoft that there was this platform and automatically you would just kind of get uh, some traffic to your blog simply because you were on a, dot, a Microsoft.com property. And, and there was other, uh, you know, aggregated blog feeds and things that people could find your content more easily. So it might be a little bit harder to build your momentum, but there are plenty of strategies to overcome that. Um, you're going to incur some personal costs for hosting your own content. Um, if it's a blog or a website or if YouTube, maybe not, but there might be some personal costs involved and it's going to be personal time. So that might be a pro or a con. You know, if you're a family person and you've got family members to take care of, obviously they need to come uh, first, but, uh, Sometimes this is, you know, technology is their day job and it's their hobby after work. So maybe it's just a source of fulfillment. So maybe it works out really well for you to do it in your personal time. Um, you also have total control over whatever you create. You have the ability to monetize it. You can, um, it could be your ticket out to a new opportunity and maybe you're building a bridge that way. So, but if it's under your employer's umbrella and you're doing this on work time and just conversation with your manager, make sure that they're supportive and, um, you can get then some of that free traffic I was talking about, like if it's a blog on a corporate blog type setting. Um, also the brand association, right? You're associated with some larger brand and that kind of pulls your brand along. And management support is a, a double-edged sword. Um, when I was at Microsoft, there were uh, team members that I had uh, on my own team and then other teams, right? It all depends on who your manager is and if they think this is a good idea or not, really. Or if it's the flavor of the month, uh, there was a time when uh, it was very popular to do what we call industry leadership activities, speaking and blogging and videos and all that. But then it was no longer popular and management had moved on with their next emphasis over the next fiscal year. And it was no longer popular, but several of us continue to do that work. And so some management supportive, some not. 
And then like me, I changed employers and all that just kind of went, uh, was shelved on that other platform. And that platform did not have longevity. They, they killed the blogging platform. They killed the video platform. They launched something new. And so a lot of my content just kind of went away. So that's something that if you do it personally, you don't have to worry about that type of scenario. And also within your employment context, it may be a ticket to opportunity as well. People get to see who you are and know who you are within the company. And suddenly you've got more opportunities knocking on the door. Gartner has something called the hype cycle. And I, I want to bring this up because this is important to understand. And this is not just about building your own brand. It's about anything you take on in life. And normally it's talking about technology trends in the industry, but it really applies to your own choices and endeavors as well. So if I, my trigger here is, hey, I'm going to start a blog or I'm going to start a YouTube channel, right? Great. And you got this peak of inflated expectations. Man, I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to share all this knowledge with the world. I'm going to show these really cool tricks that you can do with this language or this DevOps process, whatever. And it's just going to be the best thing. And you get a couple of videos out there and you've got like 100 views or there's nobody reading your blog posts. And that's the trough of disillusionment. And we've all seen uh, YouTube channels or blogs where it was like three posts from five years ago. It's like, what happened? Right. So know that that's coming. Know that there's this initial excitement and this burst of energy and then reality sets in. Wait a minute. This is hard. This takes work. It's not just something I can wing it. I'm going to have to put some intention behind this. And that begins the slope of enlightenment. And so you begin to watch and to study and learn and read and grow. And before you know it, you reach what's called the plateau of productivity, where you are actually cranking out content on a consistent basis. That's getting good engagement. That's uh, building a reputation. You're getting interaction and comments on your blog or your videos, whatever. And you're really able to start then to see some results. So I want to encourage you to be aware of this trough of disillusionment. Be ready for it. And just know that that's the time you want to buckle down and you will get there to that place of productivity then. A, a recent example for myself, a couple of years ago in 2019, I started this hobby of astrophotography. So on the left here, you'll see a picture of the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is the biggest, uh, most famous nebula in the sky at night. And the picture on the left looks, uh, for the first timer, I was really excited about that picture. Uh, but it has a lot of issues when you start to look at it from a you know, technical lens, like we would all do that, right? But on the picture on the right, uh, a year later with more practice, uh, I've invested in gear, I've invested in some study. Sure enough, it came out a lot better uh, after time, right? I hit that trough. I had to work my way through five or six really solid challenges up that slope of enlightenment until I hit the plateau of productivity. Now I've got my rig tuned. I can roll out any night and get some predictable results and, and get some things that I'm proud of. And granted, there's a lot of people that are a lot better at it, right? But it's that trough of disillusionment, slope of enlightenment, plateau of productivity, and then you've got something that's, that's uh, fun to show. All right, let's talk about where are you going to make your mark? So uh, think about all the different communication media over decades. Where do I want to uh, make my home base, right? So you've got all these different communication channels that you can take advantage of. And this list is not complete and probably not accurate either, but there's all these different things. But we take this list then and refactor it. And now you can see we've got uh, in-person type communication methods, right? Speaking at conferences or user groups, you know, doing training, mentoring, now, written formats of communication, tons of those, right? Um, audio, podcasts, uh, video, you can have a YouTube channel, right? Uh, something like that. You can do uh, Twitch streaming, you know, whatever. You can do a, maybe one of those paid training sites where you get paid to create content, and maybe you can even monetize this. There are a lot of options today to monetize your own brand. I didn't choose to do that, but a lot of people have, and they've done really well with that. And notice I crossed out the word books there. One tip that I've learned, I've never chosen to write a book because that's a lot of work, but I know several people who have, and they all say the same thing. It's a lot of work. You don't make really any money for it, but you can say, I wrote a book. Here's my book. Here's my second book, my third book. And some people have done their whole career around books. The, only, the other thing in IT is in technology, those books have a very short shelf life as well because the technology moves so fast. But you can say, here's all the books that I've written. And that builds your brand. And don't expect to get rich on writing books. That's what all the pros have told me. So, so when we think about this and you're choosing where do you want to plant your flag to make your brand online, where people can find you. Remember, you 
you help people, you record it, you put it somewhere people can find it. Here's all the different places you can put it for people to find it. So if I'm going to do this in person, written, audio, video, pick a place I want to put it. And then think about the style of communication. Is it one-to-one? You know, am I just in a a one-on-one situation, one-to-many, like a blog or a YouTube channel or many-to-many, right? Like a forum or Reddit or someplace online where I'm sharing and interacting in a community of other people, right? There's lots of different communication styles and platforms that you can choose from when you want to uh, build your brand online where you're going to call home base. Now, what I did, uh, particularly the strategy that I chose is I chose my blog, uh, which is effectively a website as my home base. There was an about page there that would uh, tell people about my background, list my credentials there. And then here's a feed of all of the content that I've created. If I go speak at a conference, I have a blog post and that blog post says, here's the resources for the conference session today, right? Maybe I speak at user groups. Uh, I do social media promotions of content that I've created. I have conference videos, but everything goes back to the blog as the home base. Maybe for you, it'd be your YouTube channel or your Twitch site, you know, whatever you pick to be your home base, pick a home base and then engage in other uh, media modes and formats and then redirect everybody back to that home base. You know, I I had a a Facebook page, a Twitter page, a LinkedIn page. They all had the exact same banner graphic, had the exact same headshot or avatar, and they all pointed back to my blog URL for more information to find the content that I created. Another thing to consider as you're building your brand online is your identity. Who are you? That's your social media handle, your headshot or your picture, your avatar, and your bio. Those three things are critical. So number one, your social media handle. Uh, a couple tips here. Um, I, my social media handle is goatee PFE. The goatee part still works. PFE was my old job title, premier field engineer. I've left that. So I made a mistake there, picked the wrong. I got another buddy whose uh, Twitter handles fix the exchange. Well, he no longer, he no longer, no longer does exchange work, but he's kind of stuck with that handle. So now I've got, you know, several thousand followers and I can't change that handle because it'll break all the links going to my social media place. So don't make the mistake that I did pick, uh, pick a handle though, that this, I did do this. Pick one that's unique across all the social media properties. I picked this tip up from Michael Hyatt in his book called Platform. I'll share with you in a few minutes here. So pick a unique handle across all the the social media platforms. There's a website called Noam. Others as well that'll go tell you if that handle's available across all the social sites. That way you're going to get something that's um, special to just you. It's going to be memorable. Try to make it catchy if you can, but not tied to your company or your job title. Also, um, your avatar, your headshot is your brand. That's your logo. That's your company logo is your picture. And a normal everyday picture is fine and classy, professional, but is it memorable? So what I did was I went out to this website called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, and I just took a a picture that somebody had made for me, a headshot, and I gave this, uh, paid somebody a random on the internet, five bucks, and they returned this cartoon version of my picture. And ever since, that's been my brand. When I speak at conferences or have a social media account, that's the logo that goes up. That's my personal logo for my headshot there. Also, you want to write a paragraph bio. In that bio, you want to talk about your your credentials, how you earn your right to speak. You talk about maybe a personal interest and then um, an endorsement. What have other people said about your content? And so uh, the way that I wrote this session title today in the session description, you'll see it says that other people have said that Ashley's sessions are informative and entertaining. And so I, I let other people establish my credibility. And so you can put things like that into your bio as you begin to build your brand. But these three things are specifically there for a reason to establish your credibility, show that you're a real person, you know, whether you're a, a fan of a sports team or you, there's a favorite food or music or whatever. Uh, and then some, some other endorsement and those three ingredients will make a very powerful bio that you can share. Um, Next up, success factors. What are some things that'll just help you have a good, successful brand? Number one, you need mentors. I've had a number of mentors in my career over time. People have already been there and done, just like we talked about in the opening today. We're learning from people who have done it already. So go find some mentors and ask them, give them specific questions. Uh, You can do it vicariously through YouTube videos, or you can actually go talk to people, meet people at conferences like this and ask them to help you. find a content creators community, some people who are like-minded and you can be talking about completely random things, different things, but everybody wants to talk about, 
what's the latest video camera or microphone or gear or blog technique or, you know, how did you monetize those types of conversations that you can have with other content creators, find a community like that or start one. So that'll help you grow and help others as well. And consistency is huge. So I was very busy in my role at my last company. And we're all busy, right? But what I decided was I can do one blog post a month. And I stuck to that. I might have two or three in a month, rarely. But I had one blog post per month because I wanted to make sure when somebody go to, goes to view my blog roll, they don't see a post from 2017, 2013, right? Uh, three posts in 2018. The, the, there's a Every month, there's a post in the blog roll. And that shows that I'm consistent and I'm committed to them, that they're, if they're going to invest in me to follow me and my content, I make a commitment to them that I'm going to give them something uh, valuable every month. And so there were a lot of a lot of months that on it was the last day of the month at 5 p.m. and I was posting my thing, but I made that commitment and it really paid off. And just doing it, practicing it, you know, it, it's it still gives me butterflies when I do a conference presentation. I've done dozens of them, but I just practice over and over. Just do it, crank out the video, crank out the blog post, crank out the conference presentations, and just doing it over time. Half success is showing up. Somebody said, just show up and do it, and before you know it, you're going to have this pile of uh, achievements behind you that will really build your brand. Uh, be involved in the community, uh, the social media, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, lots of places to get plugged in, connect with your tribe, begin to share not just your own content, but other helpful content as well. Be part of that conversation. That's huge. And take the long view. You know, SpaceX and Blue Origin, they didn't go uh, into space overnight. It takes a long time. Just be aware of that. And finally, um, well, not finally quite yet, but some care and feeding things to keep in mind. So make sure that whatever media you choose to use, uh, use the analytics features. You know, Twitter has free analytics. YouTube has free analytics. There's Google analytics for your blog tracking and website tracking. Fig go review those metrics periodically. What landed really well with your audience? What surprised you that you didn't think people would like as much and it really took off? Right. Find those kudos, those comments in your blog posts where are there your YouTube video where somebody says this really helped me. Make a screenshot of that and put those in a file. It'll give you motivation down the road. But also, if you're doing this for your employer, <laughs> it's going to show them, hey, this is really worth it. This is really making an impact. And answer those comments and have conversations in the comment thread, you know, with what, regardless of what online property you're using. And look what happens. It's called the long tail. Uh, as you begin to accumulate this, it's like putting deposits in a bank. Over time, what's going to happen is you're going to have uh, the long tail. So you'll have, you know, I had a, at, when I left my previous employer, I had about 35,000 views a month on my blog and over 150 countries represented. And the content was really connecting with people. And some people were finding stuff that I wrote five years ago for the first time. I've not worked there for four years. And every now and then I still get people ping me on Twitter about a blog post that I wrote or a script that I wrote for them five, 10 years ago. So uh, that really will take on a life of its own. And it builds this momentum then that creates your brand. And then finally, you want to, you put a lot of effort into this to make this platform, this social media or this uh, personal brand platform. You want other people to read that. Hey, I've invested in this. I want to help more people, right? And so you want to begin to promote that. There's a lot can be said about promoting that content. I want to encourage you to check out a book by Pat Flynn called Superfans, which will give you tons of very practical, actionable, actionable steps to turn your followers into superfans. So there's some things I got right and some things I got wrong when it came to building my personal brand. Um, things that work for me, addressing real world topics with thorough solutions, engaging in the community, highlighting the work of others, adding my own personal flavor. I put lots of cultural references, movies, 80s references in my content, uh, watching those metrics, following the advice of mentors, catching a tech wave or this latest trend, this latest thing that's coming, make sure that you can ride that because people are going to be searching for answers in that area, whatever this new language or technology or strategy technique, uh, if you can begin to make a niche out of that, specialize on it while people are finding it, you'll actually raise your visibility as well. And what happens at the end of the day is that's going to impact the life of your readers. I'll talk a little bit about that, that in the close. Now, I also made some mistakes. Uh, I wish I had more time. I'm kind of running short on time here, but now I could talk a lot about my mistakes too. Um, I, I chose a social media handle that's tied to my last job title, right? That was wrong. Um, talking too much about myself. 
Yeah. Uh, when you're building your personal brand, suddenly it can kind of go to your head and, you're, and you want to start talking about all your stuff. And this is what I did. This is my content that I created. And it turns people off. I go look at some of the YouTube videos of conference presentations that I gave where I spend the first three minutes talking about here's where you can find all my content online. And it just turns me off and makes me sick. Um, but I've learned since then. Uh, you notice when I opened this talk today, I didn't uh, try to promote myself and give you all, all my stats necessarily. Of course, this is about personal branding. So I had to show you some things to build my credibility. It's, if you've never met me before or heard of me, that's fine. But um, I tried not to talk about myself too much in the intro. Um, and uh, people are really more interested in the problem that they need to get fixed and how you can help them. Uh, spamming forums with my latest posts without building relationships in those forums. Uh, Pat Flynn talks about this in his book, Superfans. Uh, you want to be a part of the community conversation. Don't just make one way blast of your content into those forums or discussion areas, right? You want to be part of that conversation. Um, I missed a tech wave. My mentor at one point said, you really need to pay attention to this next thing that's coming. Little did I know that he was planning to exit and retire and hopefully hand those things over to me. And I did not study and learn that. And then it kind of missed an opportunity there uh, to take on another wave. And finally, don't get the big head. As they say, um, I've got some a story I could tell you about how I really messed up in a big way in front of a lot of people on stage. And that was very embarrassing uh, to me, but it also a disservice to, to my peers. And so uh, just be really careful. Um, and when you're out there speaking, you have a voice, people begin to listen to you and follow you. And that gives you a sense of power. Don't let that go to your head. Don't read your own press, as they say, and keep a, a humble attitude about it all. And finally, the, uh, the elephant in the room, talking about yourself. I really don't like talking about myself, but I have to do it sometimes, uh, especially early on. We have to kind of uh, say, here's, hey, here's what I created, right? Here's what I did to help and, and make sure that's out there that people can find it, right? And most folks don't like arrogant, conceited people. I don't want to be that guy. It's awkward. Uh, I don't want to talk about myself, but sometimes it's necessary to kind of get started to promote yourself some until that brand begins to take on a life of its own. But you can humbly establish your credibility with a new audience, people that don't know you by using the words of others, like I did in the um, the abstract for this session today. You know, attendees of Ashley's session have said that he's both informative and a little entertaining sometimes. Uh, do your best to take attention away from yourself, right? It's not about you and what you've accomplished, what you've done. It's about the problem that you're solving. That's where people are going to connect. Here's the real world situation that I'm helping you fix. And then others will build your credibility because they'll say thank you and they'll promote it and share it, right? And so I already talked about not opening your presentations with you, but open with a story like I did today. Open with a story, draw people in, do a brief intro, very brief intro, and then just get right into your content. Give them what they came for. Now, to wrap things up today, as we conclude here, uh, building your own personal brand is about helping people. You record it, you put it somewhere people can find it, and you just do that over and over. And you repeat that enough times, you start coming up in search results, people find your content over and over, they start to follow you, and that begins to build your brand, your reputation, and you share that, you become part of the community conversation, and you will have a brand that will automate your career, it becomes your calling card then. A couple of resources as we wrap up. Number one is this book, Platform by Michael Hyatt, it's on the bookshelf behind me. Um, Super Fans by Pat Flynn, it's on my Kindle. Uh, Fiverr, you can get some uh, graphics and music for five, ten dollars uh, cheap. You, so it's licensed content that you own that you can share without any uh, legal concerns. Uh, find that unique handle search with Noam. If you're if you want to do public speaking, I'd really encourage you to check out Toastmasters. It helped me immensely. It's a community organization, some of the cheapest and best professional development you'll ever get in your life in speaking and leadership. Uh, check out Toastmasters. And finally, let's connect on LinkedIn or Twitter. Just go search for me, go TPFE, Ashley McGlone, and let's continue this conversation. So uh, as a wrap up here, I want to share this one quick story with you. So as I was leaving uh, Microsoft to come to my new employer, I did that email that a lot of people do, right? Um, thank you for uh, so long and thanks for all the fish, right? Uh, here's all the things I enjoyed about this role. It's been very helpful for me. I've grown so much here. Thank you for your relationships and friendships. And so I sent that email out and then I didn't expect it. I got this response from somebody named David. And he says, thank you for your contributions to the community. Your work has had a tremendous impact. Here's a 30,000 foot view of how it has helped my career. Helped me get a, out of a bad job and into a good one. It caused an employer to create a position to promote me into, and I had enough fun with it that I put PowerShell enthusiast on my LinkedIn profile, resulting in a cold call from my current employer, Microsoft, 
Best wishes and your future endeavors, 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 David. I never expected that. And this, we, we talk about all these things of building your brand. This is what makes it worth it. When you're uh, up late writing that blog post or getting that video edited, whatever it is, and you realize that you've really genuinely connected with someone and helped them, not just help them, but change their life. I mean, this guy has a much better salary, a much better career trajectory. And part of that, uh, most of that was his hard work, but part of that was some influence that I had in his life. And that's really uh, makes it all worth it at the end of the day. So my name is Ashley McGlone. I'm a technology strategist at Tanium. I'd love to talk to you about how you can build your personal brand and automate your career. Here's my Twitter handle, my email address. You can screenshot this slide. And uh, I've taken these slides and posted them to my GitHub site at the URL here on this page. So uh, we, I think I've gone a little long, but hopefully we might have some time for a few questions here. I'd love to chat with you more and we can take this to social media or somewhere else if we need to. But I look forward to hearing your story of how you were able to automate your career with a personal brand.